Asbestos is a known carcinogen, and there's no safe level of exposure. Mesothelioma is a miserable disease. They must fight a truly global battle. We want to demonstrate our enormous respect. Keep up the good work. I look forward to the day when ADAO is no longer needed. Fix it. Fix it. Everything in the world can be fixed. Andy Oberta is here to speak with us. Andy is a certified industrial hygienist, has been active in the world of asbestos for a long time, and has a, uh, a particular product that he wants to talk about with us this morning. So Andy, come on up here and take the microphone. Thank you, Dr. Frank, and thank you, Linda, and good morning. Since attending uh, Fernandez Conference in Osasco in 2000, I've been to a number of these uh, events, and I've made technical presentations. Uh, my field is industrial hygiene, and industrial hygienists are not known for being confrontational. We go out, we hang pumps, and we mind our own business. But this is a subject that demands a different uh, approach. Uh, this is not entirely a technical matter. So today I'm going to morph into something of an advocate or an activist, whatever you want to call it, because that is the attitude and the approach that this subject demands. Because basically my objective and a challenge that I put out is to put this industry out of business. Now, these numbers are probably familiar to you. Uh, a couple of things to point out. One is that at present rates of consumption, there is 100 years of asbestos fiber left in the ground. Uh, secondly, that almost all of it currently goes into asbestos cement. So when we talk of the asbestos industry, we really should be talking about the asbestos cement industry. Finally, they no longer make asbestos cement. They make chrysotile cement. And if you look at any of the publications uh, out of the industry, you will very rarely, if ever, find the A word used anymore. But uh, we need to continue associating chrysotile and asbestos. Maybe we should call it chrysotile asbestos cement. But let's stick with asbestos cement for the rest of this presentation. Uh, in this country, uh, very little asbestos fiber is still used, and uh, almost no cement, if any. Uh, chloralkali has moved, filters have moved into second place, overtaking uh, friction products in the percent used. We tend to use the term translite in this country as more of a generic term for asbestos cement, when actually that is a trademark of the Johns Manville Company. Now, where does all of this uh, fiber go? Again, some probably familiar numbers. We talk about asbestos cement being used and sold in developing countries. But something to remember is that a country that is highly industrialized as an advanced economy may not necessarily have the infrastructure for health and safety protection, particularly that which is needed to confront asbestos hazards. I think this is probably uh, certainly true of India and probably also China. So let's start uh, tracking the chain of death, starting with the mine, the mill, the transportation network, uh, anywhere along this uh, chain, we have workers and the communities, their families being exposed to asbestos fiber and disease. And then we get to the manufacturing uh, facilities. This is a plant in uh, northern Israel that I visited in 1998. The uh, plant made asbestos cement uh, pipe and sheet products. In addition to the contamination and the hazards inside the plant, the waste products also uh, contaminated the surrounding area. In fact, the entire Western Galilee is currently undergoing a massive cleanup. I took some samples off the orange dust collector equipment inside the plant. Even though it had not used asbestos for over a year, the dust samples I took off of that uh, green equipment contained I'm sorry, chrysotile and amicite fibers. They also used chrysotile. I'm told that the plant equipment was decontaminated, the equipment was disassembled, and shipped to India, which is our next stop. 
Uh, I haven't visited plants in India, but these are uh, pictures that have been widely distributed. Notice again the quote from the Chrysotile Institute saying that their members only sell asbestos fibers to companies that will comply with the asbestos regulations, the health and safety regulations of those countries. Well, this of course assumes that there are such regulations, that they're adequate, and that they're enforced. And frankly, I have my doubts. So if we continue to look at uh, some pictures that come back from, from India, seeing how the material is being manufactured, the fire is being handled, the products being handled, we can see that uh, we still have this problem there, as we all know. Now, going further into the, uh, the installation of the products in buildings, their maintenance, their eventual removal, disposal, a possibility of scavenging and reuse, you can see how this, what I started calling the chain of death, just perpetuates throughout the use of the product. So what I'd like to address now is what I call the myths of asbestos uh, cement. We're told that it is not friable, that you cannot release fibers from asbestos cement products. Okay, I'm taking that piece of corrugated siding that came off of a building in demolition, and inside of a uh, exhaust hood, you can see that I'm very easily able to crumble pieces of uh, fiber and debris off the edge of that piece of cement siding with very little effort. So it becomes friable uh, through use and through, through damage. Now, uh, the other thing we're told is that because the fibers are locked in cement, they cannot be released from the surface. Now, three pictures here, uh, one from New Zealand, uh, one from a building in New Orleans, and the other one sent by a researcher in Poland who has done a lot of work on uh, the uh, environmental effects of asbestos fibers, of asbestos cement. So through normal weathering processes, the fibers become exposed on the surface, are available for release, and become airborne and an exposure hazard. And then it said that well, the products inside buildings, there is no such hazard. Well, the, uh, this is an industrial plant. On the left, you see a, an elevator shaft, a man lift. You can see that the material's been damaged. You have a vibration uh, environment. What about asbestos cement pipe? Well, remember also that this pipe, uh, a lot of it contains chrysotile fiber in addition to chrysotile and maybe amosite. Now, in the plant, they grind the ends of the pipe, uh, they bevel them to make them fit. This, of course, creates dust, which is a hazard for the workers in the plant, uh, creates a waste stream to be disposed of, and this is what has contaminated the Western Galilee. Okay, on the right is a piece of asbestos cement pipe that has come out of the ground during demolition, and you can see the chrysotile and the chrysotile fibers protruding from the surface of the fragment of this pipe. So it can be released uh, when the pipe is not only manufactured, but uh, during demolition. Finally, told that uh, encapsulation can protect the cement, well, asbestos cement. Well, I have to wonder, a product that is sold for its durability and longevity, resistance to weathering, why do we have to protect it? But people sell this product. The picture on the left is a house. Uh, the homeowner decided he would rather have a blue house instead of a gray house, so he painted the asbestos cement siding. The paint chips that I took off of the siding sent them to laboratories and took photomicrographs and the fibers are pulled off the siding, they stick to the back of the paint chips and this creates a contaminated waste stream when you take that encapsulant or paint off of the building. So what do we do about the installed products, uh, the millions of tons that are out there as Dr. Frank mentioned? Well, first of all, we need an education and outreach program, and these are going on. These are very important. I'd like to point out one very briefly that was done last year in Indonesia by a consultant named Dave Hodgkin. What he did was uh, bring together the community and a, uh, the people in a community there, and they had a two-day workshop talking about asbestos health issues, uh, protective measures, and so forth. The notes he sent me on that showed extremely involved people in the community level wanting to know about what this is, what to do about it. He then, with his uh, assistance, went out and demonstrated the removal of asbestos cement roofing from two shelters in the town. 
Then they sent the community participants out and they took care of another 50 shelters. This is the kind of program that is needed around the world. We need to get Dave's message out. We need to get some sort of presentation out. What Dave has done, I think this is a brilliant, extremely important program. We need more enforcement, of course, more uh, use of things like the ASTM, as best as cement standard, publications uh, from countries around the world. But what I'm leading up to now is what about the new products? Uh, these products are still being made. Again, outreach, uh, cutting out on the consumption and letting people know how dangerous this stuff is and encouraging them to avoid using it to stop buying it. But what about the supply side? Well, through the bans on, on asbestos fiber in many countries, we've addressed that. Uh, this has worked in some countries. Unfortunately, in the countries where it needs to work, it has not worked as well as it has to. So let's look at the supply side. Let's look at the other side of the supply side, though, and that is, as best, that is the cement. For every ton of asbestos fiber that is used, you need several tons of cement to make the product. So. One way to disrupt the manufacture of asbestos cement is to disrupt the supply of cement. And that is one technique, one approach that I'm proposing that we start looking at uh, in countries where this product is still being made. Because by selling cement to these companies, the, manufacturer, or the manufacturers and providers of cement are contributing to the manufacture of a dangerous and hazardous product. Furthermore, in light of the attorney decision in Italy, they may be also participating in a criminal enterprise. These companies need to know that they are doing this. Uh, a message needs to go out uh, through the miracle of social media to get their attention, uh, possibly something like an open letter going out on social media. A number of ways to approach this need to identify the companies that are selling Cement to the asbestos industry, need to get their attention, a lay on a guilt trip, if you will, moral persuasion, or for what effect they may have. Now, of course, this is an enormous market. They're not going to be too receptive to, to uh, giving up that market. But there are other techniques, uh, carrots and sticks, uh, punitive tariffs on cement that is being used to be mixed with asbestos fiber, subsidies for cement that is sold to be mixed with alternative fibers. Liability and legal, name them as defendants in uh, legal proceedings and litigation. Look at their, their liability situation, their insurance uh, coverage, civil, criminal penalties. There are a lot of things that can be brought to bear on the cement industry to encourage them to stop supporting the asbestos cement industry. Now, this is one chain, uh, one tool that we could look at. But uh, you know, there are other things that go along with making as best as you meant, other components of the industry. So things like the transportation, distribution networks, financial resources, and so forth. Uh, all of those, I would call them pressure points. Now, as I said, I'm an industrial hygienist, and I look at this from the technical situation, technical side, but this is not a technical issue. Certainly, there are technical issues to this, and on the technical side, we need to support this with sound science, with credible studies and credible information. That is my job, my colleagues on the technical side. But that will not put the asbestos cement industry out of business. This is more of an advocacy role. So this proceedings are being sent uh, through social media to our colleagues around the world. So I will present this as a, as a call to action as a challenge to our colleagues in this room and around the world. This is something we need to start. If not us, who? If not now, when? Thank you for listening. Keep up the good work. I look forward to the day when ADAO is no longer needed. Fix it. Fix it. Everything in the world can be fixed.